Hello, this is Giovanni, tutorial number five, I believe. Uh, in this tut, we're going to go ahead and start slicing up our track. First off, I need to clean up my working directory that I'm importing from. I went to my folder. Uh, I want to delete T0S0 because I've renamed that object, and I don't want to open multiple objects uh, with similar geometry. It gets a little confusing. Plus, there's just no need to put the... Uh, the strain on Max. So get him out of there. Get our X sectors out of there. These are obviously the old uh, unedited objects. Uh, if you remember, our, we export to a different folder. And we're going to go into that export folder right now. Meshes from Max that I use. There's all of our, our new meshes. I'm going to grab the track mesh and the wall mesh with the renamed material ID. Copy them, paste them into my working directory. And now when I import uh, this folder into Max, it should have our new uh, track object with a dirt texture and our wall should have the renamed material ID wall underscore tut. There you go. You can already see over the material editor that those are the two material IDs that are currently in this project. But we'll check to make sure. Uh, click on Polygon look down in the uh, surface properties the only material available is wall underscore tut I'll select the track now polygon and the only available material is tutter underscore heat so this is where we left off uh, we have a track that's ready to slice um, uh, when I import into max uh, it reassigns the map channels um, like I said I, I'm doing things quick and easy so I'm going to go down and reset my map channels to one for each channel bump and spec copy all and now I have a, a base texture that is uh, or a base um, material G motor material that's ready to copy and paste across a bunch of new material IDs so I'm gonna click the add button in material editor and it's gonna add materials I want to add a material for each slice that I plan on doing so we'll say str 1 and 2 for the straights uh, tur 1 2 and 3 uh, and so on so I, I highlighted and uh, I, I right-clicked and copied my Tutter Heat material. And I'm going down the line and I'm doing a paste copy on each new material I've added. And what this is doing is this is taking the texture properties from Tutter Heat and applying them to each new material. And what I still have to do is I have to go through and name each material. Now these are the names that you'll see in your TDF. So this is where I'm going STR1 and 2, TUR1, 2, and 3. Uh, and then I'm going to have a Kush and a marbles. Now this is entirely up to you. Um, the only thing you don't want to do is name them road, <laughs> you know, or, or any of the other standard material ID names that you see in your in your uh, standard R factor TDF. So up there on the top there where the name was, I said a uh, material I had to copy or, or type uh, the material ID into that as well. And you can see uh, uh, it says STR1 now up in the top bar. And I have to do this for each material I created. Um, take that name and paste it into the top once I go into the material and that's I'm so fast with the mouse there you go so there you go there's all of our materials ready to go um, now I, I simply need to select polygons uh, and as I select polygons you'll see their their set ID down there and the material on the, all the far bottom right I can change that number. The first thing I changed was I, I selected Tutter Heat, so I selected every polygon on the track, and I changed it to STR2. Now this is simply so um, one material is essentially done. I'm going to select uh, more polygons and, and rename them, but I, I don't have to do STR2. It's kind of like addition by subtraction. Um, so when I'm when I'm selecting the the Kush, it's such. A, you see how small these polygons are. If you go through and try and select each one of these one at a time, you'll go crazy. So I click and drag around the grouping uh, that I want to do. And this is for any area of track that you have a real high saturation of polygons on. And then um, by control clicking, I'm deselecting the larger polys around that area, which is a whole lot easier than selecting the small ones. Now, this could be easier to accomplish um, if I'm in the wireframe view. It's just visually, you can see the wireframe. So there, I'm not drawing across a uh, dirt texture. I'm just drawing across empty space. It's a little easier to um, grab the polys I want and deselect the ones I don't want. You can see I'm going down the line, deselecting. And now I have my uh, the the polygons that I want to name as a, a Kush material in my in my TDF. So I go into Set ID, 
change that number to the number that is uh, assigned to Cush. And you can see when I select uh, uh, the TUR2, which is the rest of the track, the, those Cush polys are not lit up. When I select Cush, you saw that they were they were indeed lit up. So next I want to do, um, I'm not going to do the whole track. I'm just going to show you, you know, the basics here. I'm going to click and drag and select a group of polys. I'm going to work my way around the outside of the track with this, these, this extra area of track beyond the cushion, which is what I'm going to call marbles. Now, obviously, when you're out beyond the walls, it doesn't matter as far as what they're called or what they are in the TDF. But I do want to have a separate TDF instance for uh, cars that get up above the cushion. And um, we can really uh, affect the way the, uh, the top of the tack track drives and the way the cars react. Uh, that get up over the cush. Um, so here we go, just kind of speeding through, just selecting all the polys. Um, once I have everything selected that I want, uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and oh, I grabbed a couple of cush there, deselect on the cush polys. And uh, yeah, once I have all these selected, um, I'll go ahead and change the set ID in the bottom right to the number that is uh, corresponds to the marble material. And there you go. All right, so I'm not going to slice up the rest of the track. I'm just going to show you what we have here. Uh, we have our STR2, which we set to everything, but is now not showing everything because we've, we've started assigning other polygons to different material IDs. As you can see, what's deselected is the marbles material on the cushion on the one end. Um, you can see there's our marbles. Tracks all the way around the track outside of the cushion material, the modeled cushion. And here is our the part of the modeled cushion that we've assigned uh, to the Cush material ID. Come out of the wireframe, take a look at it on the actual track surface, and you can see that we have STR2, which obviously will get smaller as we go. Our very thin modeled cushion on one end, our mar marbles around the outside. And that's it for slicing. Um, getting the material ID set up first is, is very helpful so that all you have to do from here is select, deselect polygons, assign material ID numbers, and from here, it's just a matter of uh, finishing the track, exporting it, and setting up the TDF, um, all of which will be in the next tutorial. Hope that helped. Good luck and have fun.